Now Bob with a distance to beat now at 283.7 feet. And he won't have to worry tonight, Paul, about making that gear change decision because he's either going to win or lose. The only time you'd get a second shot would be if more than one competitor did a full pull and then there was a pull-off. So that's a new question at this point for him. Well, here's a brand new truck we've never seen before brought by Charlie Lowe. He calls it the Killer 2. And this is a Ford vehicle and to a lot of fans in the stands. That's important if they own a Ford truck. You hear a lot of cheering for the various makes of uh, 4x4 vehicles. And here comes that Fox 4. That's what drags you to off. You can see the injection was just wide open. And the pull is a nice one, but not good enough. 273.12 feet, and that will slot Charlie uh, in third place behind Robert Gullahan and Manuel Marino. And still on top of that incredible pull of over 283 feet, Robert Gullahan. Well, Charlie's still learning a little bit about this new Ford truck of his. It's brand new, and I think he's, uh, he's going to have to go back and think about it a little bit. He came up 20 feet short. But now they pour some extra fuel into the front of the injectors and take a look up in the cockpit here. Out of Oklahoma, that's Donna Webb. The vehicle is sudden impact. And Donna is an experienced puller. And that's what it takes is experience, not strength, uh, not anything other than just having done it time after time after time. All right, let's go to Pat with Charlie Lowe at the finish line. Well, Charlie got a brand new truck for 1990, and you got to be happy with that pull. That is bouncing all that. What are you going to do to get it get it in shape? I worked on it today. I'll have to work on it a little more. Frank, right. bye. Good luck to you. Well, that's part of the problem with any new vehicle. You have to learn its personality. Charlie will obviously work with it, and he'll probably come back and take a look at some videotape as well to see exactly what the vehicle was doing. You know, pulling this far down in order can be good and bad. It can be good for Donna in that she's had a chance to watch other drivers and see uh, how their techniques work in the first place. It can be bad in that the track can be so torn up with no traction. But tonight, this track is holding up beautifully. Donna is hooked, and has got a good one going. Oh, you got a little wheel spin going there, and that pulled her off the course. And, of course, any time you drift one way or other, that's footage that you could have been using in the straight line. She only comes up at 276.44 feet. But that's good for third place and a pretty good payday here in the Astrodome. Take a look at Donna's run one more time. Now, you see that she gets a lot of wheel spin right away. And as Steve pointed out, the track is holding up particularly well. That's what hurt her ball. She got just a little bit sideways. And maybe wasn't using the steering wheel quite as well as she could have. You don't think of one of these 4 by 4s as getting sideways, but when they do, you've got to react very quickly to try to keep it in a straight line. Well, here's a familiar vehicle. It's Stitches. That's Jim Lyons on board. Now he's setting his sights on that 283.7 feet pull that he will need if he wants to move up into the top position. He applies the power, pulls away. And then slow. Now he picks up some speed. Just a beautiful truck out of Louisville, Kentucky. And this looks good. Mm, nice run going. Nice run comes up just a little bit short. Jim Lyons stitches at 277.31 feet. Not far enough. That puts Jim in the third spot and bumps Donna Webb down into fourth. Jim Lyons at 277.31 feet. Just a magnificent looking vehicle as they all are here this year, Paul. Jim Lyons, a veteran on this circuit. As we take a look at his run again, I'm not so sure, Steve, that he didn't have a similar problem to the one that Donna Webb had as he started almost right away, drifting off to the left. And, of course, as you get too close to that white line over on the left, you have to think about steering the vehicle. And any time you do that, well, that's taking away from the straight line pull. So he comes in at 277.3 and goes into the third position. Well, Jim, talk to me. How was it? What did you think of the track? And what do you think of that pass? I might have been geared a little bit high, but it was a decent run. I can't complain about it. Track's good. It's either side of that track better than the other at this point. You think left or right? I can't see no difference. It all looks the same. Well, Paul, you seldom see a man as dominant in this class as Robert Gallahan has been so far. 283 feet, and his closest competitor, the champion Manuel Marino, with only 277 feet. Now, the 4x4 four four truck, the idea is to glue him to the ground, where the monster truck is to fly him through the air. We're back at the 
Houston Astrodome for the TNT All-American, and we're ready for the monster trucks. There is the Mad Dog out of Jefferson City, Missouri, Bob Breen at the controls. He will face the Carolina Crusher. That's driven by Gary Porter. Short little runs, but packed to the gills with action. And this is single eliminations. If you lose, you're out of here. As Paul said, the Carolina Crusher is driven by this man, Gary Porter. He's been on the circuit a couple of years now. And his competition out of Jefferson City, Missouri in Mad Dog is Bob Brain. And this is the most challenging course for the 1,000 horsepower vehicles in an indoor arena. Carolina Crusher in close. Take a look at the Crusher as he makes his first pass over those crush cars. Now the Crusher and Mad Dog are even on the far turn. This is a good run. Crusher in the near line. Mad Dog has an advantage coming to the cars. The Crusher, though, comes across the line first. But Mad Dog can't get stopped, and he tags one of the grooming tractors and does some substantial damage to the tractor and got the attention of the operator, we might add. And I think, Paul, here we can see why Mad Dog could not get it stopped. They broke a front differential with parts and pieces laying everywhere. But again, no injury to the man on that tractor. We take a look at this run one more time. Look at the crusher. Look how high they get up in the air, come down, rush even more of those cars that are lined up as an obstacle. Now here in the second view, this is as they're coming back. And you can see at this point, the Mad Dog had an advantage, but the Crusher got a better launch. Went a little further and a little faster. Indeed, and won it by just a matter of a couple of feet. That turn down at the far of the course ball, I think we'll see as the evening goes on. The driver that can best negotiate that hairpin is going to be the winner here tonight when it's all said and done. Well, the two of them got together. Let's take a look at this replay angle because there was Mad Dog coming over to the right while the Crusher tried to roll over to the left. They tagged the rear wheels there, and that may have been the impact that sent the Mad Dog on into the tractor. Gary, it doesn't get much wilder than that. It doesn't allow us. We're going far, you know, we're not letting up one bit. And when I come off the second set of cars, the truck bounced up on the left side, and I was worried more about keeping it from turning over than where Mad Dog was at, and we sort of collided there at the end. Well, he got over here and caught one of the work tractors, but you fortunately were in the right lane not to have to hit anything. That's that's about as good as it gets in the Astrodome. It is. That's some real good racing down here in Houston. Good luck to you. Okay, thank you. Now watch this, Paul. Maybe even harder than driving one of these trucks is getting into it. <laughs> you got to climb way up there. You remember one year we got a ladder so that I could interview some of the folks? <laughs> all right, next up is one of the most popular monster trucks of them all. It is Clydesdale. But first, let's go back down to Pat Patterson and find out what happened to Mad Dog. You guys got yourself in a real dog fight out there. Yeah, I, I drove Gary three times in a row. And the last time I saw I had him beat, I beat myself down in the turn. And this time I was determined to beat him. And I knew I had him when I come off the hump out there. And I couldn't tell where he was coming from. Then I sent him out of the corner of my eye coming at me. So I started slowing mine down. And when he bumped me, I don't know whether they broke my steering line off or so what. And then they killed my radio and I couldn't steer mine. And then I did this. <laughs> he went over here and got in a tangle with a regular old international case tractor. Uh, that's just a case of one case in another, I guess. <laughs> good luck to you. Thank you. Well, at least he still has a good sense of humor. And look at the front of that thing. Boy, oh boy, you don't want to tangle with the monster trucks. 